Oxygen Blast Technical Seminars are an Intertech production. For instructor-led.net, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com. Well, let's talk a little bit then about what exactly REST is. For those who haven't uh, seen or uh, started to dig into the details about REST is, and you're hearing things like ROA and WOA and saying, what the heck is all that about? Let's maybe apply some um, reality to this and talk, first of all, about what REST means, what it is, and then start to look at uh, some examples and then take a look at how it's done in Java. So REST stands for Representation State Transfer. It's a term that's been around for quite some time. In fact, it, uh, in many ways, predates a lot of things we see even in SOAP-based web services, since it's been around since about uh, year 2000. Uh, there's a famous PhD thesis out there from uh, Roy Fielding that describes this idea of rest and exchange of information. And he does it in a way that uh, really is talking not only about interoperability, machine-to-machine -machine facilitation, but also, in a way, about how the World Wide Web operates today. Again, going back to the whole idea of RESTful web services and what REST is and how it's to be applied, this is really about the use of the World Wide Web paradigm in a slightly different way than what we're used to. And so it's not just about uh, getting uh, web services built. It's about how we communicate and use that World Wide Web paradigm to facilitate lots more than simple information exchange that we might see on the web today. Uh, by the way, just kind of as a point of fact, if you're wondering, well, who the heck is this guy, Roy Fielding? Now, he's a pretty important figure in our computing world. He's the co-author of the HTTP spec, and he's also one of the founders of the Apache uh, Server Project. So uh, certainly a gentleman who has quite a bit of experience in our industry, and certainly a gentleman who has uh, quite a bit of knowledge about how maybe the World Wide Web can be used effectively. Okay, well, at the heart, then, of uh, this idea of this if you will, representation uh, transfer, uh, is something called a resource. What exactly is a resource? Well, a resource is something, anything you can really conceive of. Um, it can mean uh, you or me. It can be about an account we have to share information on, maybe an order, a stock, you name it. Just about anything you can think of can be described as a resource. If you will, if you want to really stretch this, think about those kinds of domain objects or domain things you have in your business. Those are certainly probably resources that you need to exchange information on. And if you need to do that uh, between machines, well, then you probably have a resource which can be described and uh, transferred back and forth in this restful way. When we think about a resource, you'll hear a lot of people in the RESTful community talk about how uh, a resource is essentially a noun, or they're fond of saying that they're expressed as nouns. So, again, when we think about uh, some of those concepts that are resources, an order, um, an account, all types of nouns, they can then be placed in the exchange of information, and in particular, in particular we can also think about them through a document that essentially captures the current state or details of that resource. For example, uh, if we had an HTML page that had information or again state about a book you're interested in, well, there we have a resource, and that HTML web page is essentially the state uh, of information about that book you're interested in that could be exchanged, for example, between you and Amazon.com. So whether you knew it or not, you are already participating in a RESTful world. In other words, you are already participating in your use of the World Wide Web. You're already participating in an environment that really is in this idea of representation state transfer. You're already using a lot of RESTful documents. They just don't happen yet, maybe, to be documents that facilitate that machine-to-machine -machine communication. So we talk about REST. REST is the transfer again. And that's where that name transfer comes into our acronym, the transfer of these representations of resources. And we say a transfer, of course, is both request of and a response back to those clients requesting that kind of information. Now, each resource in the RESTful world must be identified, and we do that through URIs, Uniform Resource Identifiers. There's that uh, resource name again. In fact, uh, when we think about uh, URIs, we're often led to think about URLs, Uniform Resource Locator. Yeah, that's the specific or more specific uh, URI that helps us to identify where things are on the World Wide Web. 
But in fact, in our computing world, so we can give just about anything, or often do give many things in our computing world, this URI to help uniquely identify those items, those resources. And so on the paradigm of the RESTful web services, we need to be able to uniquely identify one of those documents and say specifically, how do I get information about my order, my book that I'm interested in, what have you. If we look at the uh, URLs, again, those more specific URIs, using web-based RESTful systems, we'll often find that those URLs help identify not only what we're interested in, but also where it can be found. So, for example, here's a RESTful request, if you will. Please give me the... Uh, student James Bond information, the state about the resource called James Bond. So you see it not only contains information about what we're interested in, James Bond, but also where, and that is that we can find it in this case at intertech.com slash students. So again, you're already familiar with a lot of the things that are in the RESTful web service world. You're, in, you're already uh, infinitely familiar with the idea of resource and really how we identify and locate those resources. Now, you do it in such a way that really facilitates the human-to-machine interaction. What we're going to be talking about going forward is how do we facilitate that machine-to-machine -machine interaction using this very common paradigm. So when you're browsing that World Wide Web the next time, you can say, yep, I'm a RESTful user as well. Again, you're often uh, requesting via your URL request in your browser information about things like stock prices for stocks or maybe the availability of a hotel room. Uh, all, again, different states for different resources out there. And in your case, when you're using your browser, you're asking for that representation, that document that represents that resource, in a form that's typically in one of these guys, something like HTML or maybe XHTML, along with images and other mind types, because that's what we as humans, through our browser, are able to uh, kind of chew through, diagnose, and use to, um, to facilitate our needs. When it comes to machines, while we could use one of these paradigms, in some cases might, I shouldn't say it's paradigms, maybe these uh, formats, and, and while we could use one of these formats, we'll often find that those formats are maybe not as well used or well liked by our machines as something maybe a little bit more concise that just transfers the information from machine to machine. So that gives us the idea that in REST, we have the option to use other formats. So humans, yep, we're interested in those types of uh, mind-type formats for our browsers. But machines, machines are going to more typically be interested in things like, well, XML, sure. XML is um, used even though we're not talking about SOAP-based web services. XML is still a great mechanism for not only describing and providing uh, the data, but also giving us uh, things like schema to help format that data in our XML document. So it can still be used in a RESTful world, as well as things like H uh, XHTML. But we'll also find we can use other formats, for example, something called JavaScript object notation or JSON. Uh, in fact, we can use, uh, again, things like uh, simple text or comma-separated values. The format is really something that in the RESTful world is not dictated in many ways, especially uh, not always dictated by the server sending back to a client information. We'll allow the format to really be at the disposal of the requester, of the client. When they make their request through URL, we'll often see that in a RESTful way, uh, the format that they're requesting is also attached to or somehow uh, put as part of the URL and their request, so that we not only know that we want information about the James Bond student, but we'd like that in JSON format. So we all have the idea of resources, the nouns in our RESTful world. We have the idea that format is really a mechanism at our client's requests or wishes. In the RESTful world, how do we then uh, work with or take action on these RESTful resources? Well, when we're doing these uh, RESTful uh, requests across the World Wide Web paradigm, more precisely across HTTP, we'll find that HTTP methods are used to determine or at least specify on what we want done with or to a resource. And when I say with or to a resource, what do I mean by that? Well, for example, if we use the get method, the get HTTP method, the most common, that's our mechanism for suggesting as a client we'd like to receive information about the latest state of the resource. Very similar to how you use get today to get a document, get an HTML document from the World Wide Web, again, on things like books that you'd like to order. We'll use the post uh, operation, or if you will, the post method in HTTP to provide information about new state, or if you will, more precisely, about the creation of a new resource. 
you want to post information about a new book uh, from a machine-to-machine -machine, uh, standpoint, we'll do that in a RESTful way using the post operation in HTTP. Delete will be our method of choice when we want to remove a resource. Maybe we need to tell uh, one of our servers that uh, a book should be uh, taken out of circulation. We'll do that with a delete request uh, in our RESTful world. And things like put allow us to do updates, so changing the state of an existing resource out there. So again, from a RESTful perspective, these HTTP methods offer the ability to take action on those resources that are in our environment. The RESTful people like to say these are the verbs, these are the actions, the verbs that we can use on those resources, again, the nouns in our environment. For more free learning resources and to see the latest lineup of our instructor-led .NET, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com.